Well, uh, I think the fact that we're all very good friends and uh, grew up in the same area has a lot to do with that. And I think we got lucky when we met each other that um, everyone had very similar goals in mind. And we've been fortunate that um, everyone has really pushed themselves as musicians and uh, made a, a real attempt at, uh, you know, just be bettering themselves. And it's something that, you know, we've always tried to, to work on, pushing our musicianship and trying to uh, expand the boundaries of the band, you know, so... I don't know. I, luck, call it luck, call it fate. I, I don't know what it was, but, um, you know, the five of us are, are still together and enjoying it, you know. Because mm. you, you said you were friends. I mean, quite often, you know, most bands start off as friends, but the, the tensions of being thrust together for months on end kind of build up, you know. Well, I think that, um, you know, you just have to understand each other when it comes to that you know there are stressful times and there are moments um, of debate and so forth but I you know I think that's very healthy I think that that uh, is sort of a spawns creativity for us I think that the sometimes if we all had the exact same mind uh, it wouldn't provide for much variety uh, in the band so, you know, we sort of, uh, you know, can appreciate the differences. But fortunately, when it comes to business decisions or um, kind of where we want to take the band creatively, we have a common sort of focus on that. And, you know, if, if someone's having a bad day, we just, you know, you just accept that. Not everybody can... Um, you know, be in the ultimate frame of mind all the time. It's just, it's just very hard to do that. So, uh, I don't know. You know, we just managed to uh, keep it together without really any any problems. I think. I think the fact that, we, you know, the our career is constantly expanding is is a source of great excitement for all of us. And uh, I think the our music that we're writing now uh, has grown so much. And evolved so much from when we very first started. It's just very exciting, you know, to be a part of. It's very exciting to see what we're, uh, what we're capable of now. You know, it was probably a little. We couldn't have plotted our course, you know, years ago where it would have gone. But you just have to believe in your team. And not have attitudes. <laughs> that's that's the big thing in there. You know, sometimes people with, you know, people change over a course of time. But I think, you know, we've been very fortunate that um, everyone has maintained a, you know, their their heads yeah. together. No particular member started believing their publicity handouts. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, are you still based in Seattle? Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, what? What's the rock scene like there? Well, it's blossoming right now, really. There's all kinds of bands getting signed, uh, lots of music coming out of the area. It's very alive right now, much more so than when we first um, got our record deal in 1983. It was a very different situation then. No place to play, um, barely. I mean, we were the only band in the area that had a record deal, aside from Hart, who had been signed years before us and now the succession of record deals is pretty pretty constant up there um, I just think that you know there's uh, it's always been a very creative area but I think record companies you know were waiting for all the bands to come to them and now that they're you know they're discovering that uh, they don't really have to do that necessarily, you know. It, it would be a tragedy if every band that wanted a record deal had to move to Los Angeles, you know. People are writing more, you know. I think one thing that 
some impact that we might have had on the local scene was as an example, showing bands that, you know, you can you can get a record deal and live in Seattle. It's, it's possible. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we did it just through writing our own material and recording, and I think there's been a, a great upsurge. There was an upsurge in that after we got our deal, bands focusing on writing their own material. I cer we certainly wouldn't claim responsibility, you know, for any of the activity that's happening there. Now that's a result of, you know, those bands and their talents and things. But, you know, maybe if we could help open that door a little bit more into the area, then maybe, uh, maybe we did. Did you actually start as a cover band? Yes. Right. And was that hard to sort of, uh, you know, because um, I, I know the sort of scene in that if, if you if you're a cover band you right. you get gigs you know and if you do your own material you don't right. so there's a uh, how did you overcome we didn't that do state? gigs <laughs> gigs being the, the the determining factor there if you do covers you get gigs if you don't you don't get gigs so we just didn't get gigs that you know we said that is not that wasn't the priority to get gigs the, the, the priority was to get a record deal and gigs doesn't necessarily equal record deal but writing original material probably might have a little bit um you know we didn't want to make records of other people's songs so we just decided early on that we weren't going to play gigs and we were just going to write and we just kept our day jobs and you know spent all our money on this tape and i hope that you know that tape would somehow get the attention of a record company and fortunately it did what was your day job i worked in a hospital i i, I was uh all the supplies that come in i was sort of in charge of a storeroom stocking all these things and you know keeping track of them unloading deliveries and that sort of thing your first brush with drugs. <laughs> yes, <laughs> good drugs. Yeah. So, uh, and when you when you started playing guitar, who who were your heroes? Well, the first record that I ever had was a, a Beatles album. Oddly enough, my grandparents bought me uh, Sgt. Pepper, and I must say that they had incredible taste uh, at that time because I, I really grew up listening to the Beatles as a youngster. They were like my favorite band. And um, I think once I actually began playing guitar, it wasn't until I was about 13, and my older brother uh, had quite a few Led Zeppelin albums around the house. And that's what I really locked into when I began playing guitar. That's what I wanted. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that interested me. I really loved Paige's guitar work. So... I started, I launched right into like Houses of the Holy, I think was like the first album that I was trying to learn, you know, when I was playing guitar. And just from there, then, you know, it just opened the door uh, to just so many different kinds of, of music, you know, Pink Floyd. Most of the things that I really liked, though, were either uh, British or European bands initially starting out, with the exception of like Rush from Canada or Aerosmith you know, or Van Halen or something, but certainly more, um, you know, Jeff, our, our singer, most of us, you know, we, he's into Genesis and Yes, and we just kind of generally liked uh, the music that was imported. Right, yeah, the more, more difficult to get hold of stuff. Yeah. It just seemed, uh, I don't know, there was something to it that just grabbed us as kids. I, I, I really can't explain it. It was just, you know, I look at it now, a analyzing it, and I, I, I think that there's a depth, you know, in a lot of cases. that there Sometimes there's, uh, in, a, in American bands, there is a... Um, well... Sometimes it's it's a it's a bit shallower, I think. You know, there's a I'm and I'm not generalizing about all. There are certainly exceptions, you know, 
there's a lot of great American bands, but I, I don't know, I just thought that, you know, the stuff that Floyd talked about, you know, on their records, the stuff that late era Beatles, you know, is worldly sort of ideas, you know, it wasn't babes, you know, I like, I love babes, you know, everyone that, you know, but I don't think every song needs to, to be reduced to cars and babes which you know west coast rock music for for a great length had this sort of mentality that the tunes had to be about cars and babes i don't know why that's all you can do on the west coast <laughs> there's lots of both yeah right so uh but even but even the, you know the bands you mentioned did they took their influences from America anyway. Well, it's all, I mean, yeah. you know, they took influence from America, we took influence from, you know, it's all, you know, n nobody is, nobody is original. Mm. Everybody is just uniquely derivative. Mm. That's all we can ever hope to be, is, you know, we're just a hodgepodge of all the influences that we've ever, you know, appreciated or liked just kind of spun into what the five of us as a chemistry come up with so you know yeah one of the things about Queen's Rice has always been that the, the harmonies that you know the special attention to vocals mm -hmm. you know is, did you set out with that kind of uh, intention well we, we've always you know everyone very much appreciates melody I think it it's like all of us uh, strive to have strong melody in the songs. As far as, you know, vocal arrangements, I mean, it's just that sort of thing with uh, harmonies and, and parts working together. You know, that's just musical. It's, it's nice when you have a part and you can support it with um, other parts around it that work together with it, you know. So, hopefully the whole piece is harmony, you know, bass working against guitars, working against vocals, um, all of it is creating harmony, but, you know, a lot of the vocal things, you know, we're blessed with a capability like Jeff, who is uh, a very, um, he's capable of a lot with his voice, and it opens up many doors you know for us to be able to explore it's, it's very rare that we can well let's kind of take this approach you know jeff you know he's capable of, of of anything really that he wants to do with his voice so that's nice that we're not working in limitations there either because musically you know we place no limits on us and the fact that jeff is constantly pushing with his voice to try new things with it you know just makes for all the more interesting combinations you know and this particular album, you know, Eddie, our bass player, and myself sang a, a great deal of backups on. So we've been working, you know, Jeff is the voice of the band, but, you know, uh, when we're in the studio doing things, um, in the past, he was generally doing um, the harmony work and everything. He was, like, doing most of the vocals, all of the vocals, yeah. in the case of Operation Mindcrime. And this album, we decided to take a different approach where, you know, Jeff is obviously singing all the lead stuff, but Eddie and I are actively, you know, if there's a harmony part, it's not Jeff singing the harmony, it's me singing the harmony or Eddie singing the harmony. I, mean, I even sing a little bit of lead vocal on one of the tracks. So, you know, that's a, that's a, it, it improves us as a band to have more voices and, you know, Jeff's a great, uh, you know, inspiration as far as trying to learn that you know yeah i think it, it works you know all, um yeah definitely works having um, yeah, most ba you know most bands that if you have something that has a a great a, a ability you know uh it, it just opens you you know live you can do all these things you can do all these four part harmonies or something if you've got that many voices in the band that that can sing and sing well so we're really trying to develop that you know it's just going to make us a stronger band our live presentations will be you know that much that much better if you have a single singer and then you know you lace your albums with all this stuff and live nobody else can sing it's pretty yeah, it's pretty, pretty sad disappointing live as well 
I'm always impressed when, uh, especially because uh, a lot of bands don't give enough attention to live backing vocals. Mm -hmm. They just, you know, they don't think it's important. Right. But it is. It makes it makes the whole thing. Yeah. yeah sound so much better yeah you know, no matter how good your lead singer right. is you, know, you can only do so much as you right. said you know, without using backing tapes yeah you know. okay I mean uh, it, have you, how do you think uh, Queensryche has evolved over the seven years well I think we've become an unpredictable band which is something that we've really strive for and uh, I don't think that we're a band that everyone knows exactly where we're going, sometimes even ourselves. You know, I, I think that we're constantly redefining ourselves with each release, and um, I think maybe even we've been kind of stubborn as far as uh, doing what we want and not really sort of um, maybe following the uh, corporate road, you know, which is, fo you know, which is... Uh, I think the best the best way you know to uh, to do this is you know when you write from the heart and people appreciate the things that you're doing you know that that's that's the best when it's not uh, you know music is so factory churned out these days there's formulas for everything and you know stock Aikman Waterman you know they just churn out things you know there's producing teams at home that do the same thing Maurice Starr who's churning out new kids on the block songs and you know the era of the 60s was such an exciting time I think musically because the bands were making the music I think what happened in the 80s where the record companies were making the music or dictating the formats as well as radio everyone's so desperate to, to fit into a format that everyone has to try to write a specific type of song. I think what happens is you step all over the creativity of the individual and you get a hodgepodge of music that all sounds the same and you don't get anything different. You have no variety. So, that being said, you know, we have always just tried to write um, whatever it is that the five of us managed to create and not try and chase around public taste because it's a f it's a fruitless you know effort and uh, hope that what we do somehow will connect with people and um, if it doesn't then we walk away with you know uh, our pride at least you know I mean if you lie to yourself and write some record that you don't believe in but you think the public's gonna like you know if it's not a commercial success you've lost twice you know so but you know we work very hard on our stuff we you know there's a, a confidence in the band that you know that there is an audience out there for our music it's just um, persistence you know time touring making